Alright, in this video we're going to talk about something which is called logarithmic differentiation. And logarithmic differentiation is differentiation is basically, you know, maybe what it sounds like. You're taking derivatives involving logarithms. Okay? So two things to, to point out about logarithmic differentiation. There's certain cases where you don't have to do it, but it makes problems easier. And there's other problems where I'm not really sure how to take a derivative other than by using this procedure. So it is something that's useful to know. Let's look at a problem where it's not necessary to use logarithmic differentiation, but it does in fact make things a little bit easier. So suppose I had to take the derivative of this function, square root of x times e to the x squared times x squared plus 1 to the 10th. I could use the product rule a few times and simplify things down, but instead what I'm going to use this process of logarithmic differentiation. And all you do with logarithmic differentiation is you basically take the natural logarithm, or any logarithm, natural logarithms are easiest. You take the natural logarithm of the left side, and then you take the natural logarithm of the right side, and then you use properties to break up the right hand side. Okay, so I'm going to use my properties of logarithms. I could rewrite this again, there's a bunch of products in here, so I'm going to get a bunch of addition. This is x to the one half, so I could rewrite this as one half ln of x. I'll get plus x squared times ln of e plus 10 times ln of x squared plus 1. And I could clean this up a little bit more. So this is simply 1 half ln of x plus x squared. Remember, natural logarithm of e is equal to 1 plus 10 times ln of x squared plus 1. And again, on the left side, we can't forget we have ln of y now, not just y. Okay, and this is where we now take our derivative. So again, the only thing I've really done is I've introduced natural logarithms and I've taken, um, well, I've just used properties of logarithms to break up my original problem. Um, obviously, I left out one step. You may want to try to fill in the details here a little bit. But I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. You have to remember to use implicit differentiation on the left side. So on the left, when you do logarithmic differentiation, the derivative of ln of y is 1 over y. And then you have to tack on your dy dx, or y prime term. On the right side, I'll get 1 half the derivative of ln of x being 1 over x. Well, the derivative of x squared is simply 2x. And then my 10's along for the ride, the derivative of ln of x squared plus 1, I'll get 1 over x squared plus 1, the derivative of x squared plus 1 being 2x. Again, if you've forgotten how to take derivatives of um, logarithmic functions, feel free to look at some of my videos. I do quite a few examples of that. And we can simplify down the right side. I'll have 1 over 2x. Um, I'll have a 2x in the middle. If I multiply my 10 and 2x, that'll go on top as 20x over x squared plus 1. Um, on the right, though, I still have this 1 over y, y prime. And what we want to do, though, is simply solve for y prime. That means we would have to multiply both sides by y. But I want my final answer to be in terms of x. So if I multiply both sides by y, well, remember y is the very original thing we started with, so that's what I'm going to plug in here for y. So y, again, is square root of x times e to the x squared times x squared plus 1 raised to the 10th power, and that's all being multiplied by the stuff I have above it, this 1 over 2x plus 2x plus 20x over x squared plus 1. Okay, so really all I did was multiply both sides by y, but I'm rewriting y, what it is for my very original problem. Okay, so again, you know, this isn't to say it's super easy and, and uh, not much work, but I think it's probably a little quicker than doing the product rule quite a few times and then trying to simplify it all down. 
Again, you could do this problem though without logarithmic differentiation. So let's do a problem where I think you kind of really need to do logarithmic differentiation to take the derivative of it. So suppose I have this problem. Suppose I have, um, what's a good one? Suppose I have ln of x raised to the x power. And the thing you should look for is basically you have something involving a variable on the inside raised to something involving a variable as an exponent. So notice I have a variable on the inside and I have a variable as an exponent. When you see this type of thing, that's going to be a good indication that you have to use logarithmic differentiation. A lot of people will do the following incorrect thing. Um, they'll get confused and they'll say, well, I guess the x comes out front, we leave the inside alone, we'll take one away, and then chain rule, we'll multiply by the derivative of the inside, and that's definitely not the thing to do. So be careful about that on these problems. But what you do is the same thing as before, we'll take the natural logarithm of the left side, we'll take the natural logarithm of the right side, and then on the right side, I can use my properties of logarithms. Remember, if you have something raised to a power, to an exponent inside the logarithm, that can come out front. So I'll have ln of y equals x times ln of ln of x. And now this is where I take my derivative. So the derivative of ln of y, again, is 1 over y times y prime. On the right side, I'm going to have to use the product rule on this, along with the chain rule. So the derivative of x is 1. I'll leave the ln of ln of x part alone. I'll put a plus in between. I'll leave the x alone. And now if I take the derivative of ln of ln of x, I'll get 1 over the inside, which is ln of x. By the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 1 over x. Okay, so there's my derivative of the right side using the product rule. I can actually cancel my x's out so that on the left side, excuse me, the right side, I'll be left with ln of ln of x plus simply 1 over ln of x. And again, I'm going to multiply both sides by y, but y is the very original thing we started with, which is ln of x raised to the x power. So notice that looks a lot different than this incorrect method. So this is one thing you have to be careful about. Again, when you see a variable power, a variable on the inside raised to a very, <coughs> excuse me, a variable power, that's when you're going to want to use this logarithmic differentiation. So two examples of logarithmic differentiation. Again, in one case you didn't have to do it. Um, in the other case, I think you kind of are, are forced to do it. Um, if you have any other questions or need to see some more stuff about logarithms, feel free to take a look at my website. Lots of videos on there. Um, definitely a lot of videos involving logarithms.